Mizuma TV, what's going on, y'all? Shout out to Mizuma Nation. Shout out to the Mizuma Mob. We in the building as always, man. I hope everybody's having a blessed, beautiful, positive, productive day. Uh, even though it's a shitty day, shitty rainy day out in Philly, man, I'm on my way to go get it. I hope y'all doing the same. Um, I apologize for not going live throughout the weekend, man. I had so much going on that I need to straighten out uh, in my household, you know what I mean, amongst my family. So um, and by the time I was finished doing stuff for the day, it was time for me to fall back and just get ready for the following day. So my apologies. No doubt, for sure, tonight we going live. We definitely going to chop it up with the people, man. That's what Mazuma TV does. That's what Mazuma Nation is all about. Yeah, and we come together and we talk this boxing. But um, what I want to talk about today is Xander Zayas. You know what I mean? Xander Zayas. Um, I read an article from Boxing Scene. Shout out to them. And they was really speaking on Xander Zayas and how far along he has come. And um, I believe he has 17 bouts now. I could be wrong. 17 and 0 with 10 knockouts. And um, he's been putting on some impressive performances. So now it's getting into the discussion where uh, Xander is transitioning from prospect to contender. You know what I mean? So it's starting to look like this guy can actually um, start making statements at the 154 division and prove that he's worthy of fighting for a world title. You know what I'm saying? Xander is extremely young. I'm sure that top rank um, is taking their time with the kid. You know what I mean? Um, they're not in no rush to put him in a situation where he's going to fight one of these top tier 154 pounders as of right now. But um, according to this boxing scene article, he's ranked number four in the WBO. So that that's top five. You know what I mean? So that's something that really needs to be taken into discussion. And because of this fight that he just had against Roberto Venezuela, they might rank him even higher. You know what I mean? And if y'all guys don't know who's holding a WBO strap right now, for now it's Jamel Charlo. But as soon as he fights Canelo, it'll be handed over to Tim Zhu. You know what I mean? So um, he'll be in line to fight in Tim Zhu. And um, he could get the call at any moment. You know what I mean? Tim Zhu could offer him that fight at any moment. So that's, that's a serious discussion to be had. And when you're that close to fighting for a world title, whether it's a WBO, WBC, WBA, IBF, um, you're a contender. You know what I mean? So um, just speaking on Xander Zayas, man, he's really been impressing me. You know what I mean? He seems like the most, um, besides the champions that's at Puerto Rico right now, you know, I, uh, the um, the smaller guy, man, I forgot his name. I think his name is like Oscar something. Uh, we had Subrail Matias. We got Amanda Serrano. But in terms of like the young dudes coming up, it seems as if Xander Zayas has the most potential out of all of them. Um, just how the way he carries himself, how hard he goes into camp. Um, doesn't really make too much noise, man, but um, he does all his talking in the ring. Um, he's been looking impressive, man. He's been looking good. There's nothing that I could really say bad about him because when you look at this performance against Venezuela, his punch accuracy was great. Um, his defensive responsibility was great. His composure was ahead of his time, in my opinion. Um, not reckless, you know what I mean? Um, not be, I wouldn't say he was being economical, but he was being efficient, you know what I mean? He didn't really waste too many punches, you know what I mean? Sharp, accurate, fast, strong. You could tell he was just at 147 not too long ago. You could tell he's filling in the 154 great, you know what I mean? So um, it seems like everything is falling into place for Xander in terms of how he's uh, looking at his performances and just how he's growing mentally in the sport. And he made it clear in this boxing, uh, in this boxing article that, um, that he's here. You know what I'm saying? He's coming, and he's looking to show the 154 division that he's here to stay. You know what I mean? He's pretty much sending a statement out to the entire division. And um, not only – and another thing with his performance, too, was um, he's a dog, man. He's a dog. He got that killer instinct in him. And um, you could tell that he has a great relationship with his coaches with how um, he listens very carefully and he sticks to the script, you know what I mean? Because there was a few times he got several knockdowns and then it really even seemed like he was too, like, antsy to try to get the job done. He's maintained his composure, which is, like, amazing for me to see for a young fighter because, you know, usually when, when young fighters get somebody hurt, they, like, go for the gusto, you know what I'm saying, to try to – they get all reckless and they might end up getting caught, you know what I'm saying, now they're in trouble. Um, he shows a lot of maturity in the ring, man. It seems like he's beyond his years from what I've seen with Xander. And I, I'm a big fan of the kid. You know what I mean? Whether he would have been Puerto Rican like myself, uh, fucking uh, Ukrainian, whatever, he would have definitely had, had my support. You know what I mean? And I really rock with how Xander's eye is, is performing and how he's putting on for the island. Um, he's, he's looking like an absolute talent at 154. Um, do I think he's ready for a world title shot right now? 
no. You know what I mean? I, I feel like he's still young. He still has some maturity and, and, and growth to be had on his side. Um, Jamel Charlo's at his peak right now. Um, Tim Zhu, uh, he's he's uh, coming into his own as well. They might be a little bit too mature for him. They might be uh, a little too strong for him as of right now. I could be wrong, but um, if I'm top rank, I'm taking my time with the kid. You know what I'm saying? He's he, he's younger than me. I'm 25 years old. He's younger than me. I don't know exactly what his age is. He's probably like 20, 21 right now. Could be younger or older, what have you. But um, nonetheless, um, I'm not rushing him into a world title shot, but he's one of them kids that he he's a diamond in the rough, man. Um, the the longer they, the, I'm sure they don't want to like stall him out too long. You know what I mean? He's not ready to come out the oven yet, but he's he he he's cooking up real nice and uh slow. You know what I'm saying? Real nice and everything's coming together. They putting the right ingredients together on the kid, and before you know it, within the next two to three years. He might be ready to be released into the 154 division. And I think that he'll give a lot of these dudes problems. You know what I'm saying? Um, the only problem that I really see is that because he's with top rank, um, there's not too many 154 pounders that's with top rank. It seems like all the top 154 pounders are with Al Heyman and PBC. Whether we're talking about Sebastian Fundora, whether we're talking about Brian Mendoza, Tim Zhu, Jamel Charlo, um, I'm sure there's more that I'm missing out on, but nonetheless, you you, you get what I'm saying. Um, even even Danny Garcia, Danny Garcia is at 154. Um, Jose Benavidez, I seen that he fought at 160, but he fights at 154 as well. So it's a lot of good fights that could be made out here. A lot of good fights, but um, it might be some difficulties because of the top 154 guys that he he should be looking to fight in the future. Or on the other side of the street, like they said against Terrence Crawford, you know what I mean? But uh, we'll see exactly how Xander Zayas' career unfolds. I'm sure they're going to keep giving him guys who um, who are ranked in sanctioning bodies, but not uh, not too big, not too big of a name. You know what I'm saying? Not somebody who's really um, like a world beater or whatever, but somebody with a solid record. Like this dude, uh, Roberto Venezuela, I, he he. he he had an extremely high knockout ratio, so he was a threat. But they knew that he was beatable at the end of the day, and they felt like Xander was ready. So um, he, he rose to the occasion, and he did well. But um, let me know what y'all guys think about Xander Zayas and him transitioning into a uh, contender in the 154 division. Um, how do y'all rank him amongst the other 54-pounders? Um, do you think he's ready for a world title shot? Um, who should he fight next? Let me know in the comments below, man. This is Mizuma TV. Shout out to Mizuma Nation and the Mizuma Mob for checking in, man. Leave a comment, leave a like, uh, subscribe, hit the bell notification so y'all know when I'm uh, posting a video or going live. We're on the road to 1K and we're extremely close. And um, I'm, I'm extremely thankful for it all. So thank you. Uh, I'll be back with another video and a live tonight. I'll get at y'all, man. Peace.